Good morning, folks. I'm going to show you... Uh, I've been working on popper droppers. All right, so half of the equation with a popper dropper is a popper. And it needs to be a simple popper because uh, what you're going to do, is, uh, essentially all you need this for in the popper dropper is to keep the dropper at a consistent level uh, from the top of the water. Uh, yesterday evening at uh, Lake Madison, the most productive level was about three feet underneath the popper uh, for the crappie and sunfish. I was fishing in less than four feet of water. Uh, most of it was uh, between, well, most of it was right at three feet. And I made this popper last night because I, I had some problems with the one that I had made before that. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and make another popper for a popper dropper, but this will be a typical fly, uh, typical uh, frog pattern because I like frogs. They just work like the Dickens. And the first thing you got to understand is you need to tie the dropper to the popper. And I've done it various ways. I mean, a lot of times they just tie to the hook or use a special uh, knot that makes it drop off the end of this thing. But that all affects the front of the fly and uh, various other things. So, you got the th hook threaded up. I'm going to do a couple layers of thread. Now, what I need to do is find my, this is like 25 pound test straight mono. And this is this is what's different about this fly is I'm building in a loop or in my case I like to use a swivel. It gives the back of the fly a little bit of extra weight. You see how I position that on there. I take my swivels, which are just a plain old High quality. <laughs> this ain't high quality, but this will work. I've had these things come apart. I've actually used them to tie the fly line uh, to the leader when I'm using subsurface flies. But you just thread this thing on here like this. And it needs to be fairly well tucked inside. I like to make sure that it's just behind the hook about yay far and you start wrapping this in and this is going to go right alongside the other on the top of the shank of the hook this kind of solves uh, one other problem that you might have and that's keeping the frog fly or the popper oriented uh, butt down with the, with the frog fly that's that's pretty important Alright, I'm going to cut this off. Believe me, that, that thing is never coming loose. Yesterday, I late in the day, I decided to run two, um, two droppers. I had a clouser and one of my jig flies on a 164th ounce jig. And it turned out that was the trick to catch the crappie. They they definitely preferred the minnow, the clouser minnow type. Uh, it was on the bottom, so it was running the deepest, but boy, they hammered that thing. That's also what that big giant bass hook, when he busted my line. And I didn't even realize it had busted my line before uh, the next cast and the next fish. And I re-rigged, still caught a bunch more crappie. Uh, and it was a good trip. Yesterday was just fun. That was just plain old fun. Alright, I'm going to just make a simple tail. I'm going to put a hackle feather on here. Let's get this back. This will be a three layered foam with eyes, so it makes it five layers. I'm just going to give this thing some poofiness at the back. Mostly it's clear at the back. I don't 
I don't believe you need much on this popper. Probably should have put some flash in there first, but that's all right. We can do flash second. This will help cover up the back. Do the same thing. I'm going all the way down. There, see, now that, that hook is about halfway hidden. I'm going to go ahead and put some flash in here. This is one strand tripled over, quadrupled over, so I got four strands coming up the back. I'm going to try to keep it on the top of the hook. I'm going to go toward the back. There we go. Keep it up top. Do the same thing. Lash it all down in the back. <coughs> Cut this all about that long. Now, just for grins and giggles, I've got this fake bucktail. Uh, and I'm going to put a, a good collar of this stuff to help guide that dropper situation away and, and help keep the... Uh, materials in the back of the fly in the back of the fly i've had a little bit of trouble here recently with uh the, you know that stuff moving forward and, and wrapping on the hook so once we get that we're going to spread it out a little just like that do the same thing and i really want this stuff to kind of spray out a little bit Oh yeah, there we go. Look at that. That's dang near perfect. Alright. That's enough for the back of the fly. This is this this really isn't intended to catch fish. It's it's most important. Uh oh, look at there. Wasn't that dumb. I cut my thread. That gummit. Alright, we got it re-threaded. I don't do that very often. I wasn't paying attention. All right, now we got a nice streamlined back of the fly. We've got it all wrapped up tight. The shaft of the hook is pretty good size now. Now we need to put a head on this fly. I'm going to tag down all this stuff real good. Get a nice little whip. Make sure that stuff doesn't come loose. A couple of whips. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pre-make the head and slide it over top of this. I found that is the easiest way to keep the super glue from just getting into everything. So you got it. You got a little bit of guard hair, a little bit of flash, and a little bit of chartreuse tail underneath there. All that material is is placed so that it helps keep this uh, swivel behind it and covered might very well be able to use this particular popper on its own as a regular fly that won't hurt nothing and if you really wanted to get rid of it just cut that off but I I'm going to use this fly both uh, with that swivel and a dropper and without it just because I think having that extra weight in the tail will help orient this thing like a frog sits in the water all right we're going to use straight up yellow foam we're going to need a nice little slice about yay big to start our process i might as well go clear across this is this is one of the developments i've had recently um, and because this is this fly is supposed to hold um, a a weight on the bottom, the dropper, it needs to have enough foam to really give it some buoyancy. All right, so here's how we do this heads now. I take a little bit of glue, I fold it over. This will be three three. Uh, uh, get yourself some gel some gel glue. Uh, that is so much better. It doesn't run everywhere. It works just as well. See how I folded that over? I'm going to squeeze both ends, get some super glue on my fingers, start the morning. 
And when this stuff activates, it's going to bind these two things together like nobody's business. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something a little different on this so that it pops better. All right, here we go. That's the first level. Now, you can see how I've got that at a slight angle. I'm going to turn this over on itself. And I'm going to glue it all together with a tiny bit of space in here. Because it's going to slide over this hook and on like that. And I want it to be fairly tight. So, let me glue this piece to this piece by putting glue, super glue, on this side only. I don't want any of that in that groove. As a matter of fact, I see there's got some in there now. Oh, it's already dry. Okay. So, let's get this. A little bit of glue on here. Boy, when this stuff activates, it is on... It is never coming loose. Alright, I'm going to very carefully fold that over. I make this a little longer this way so that it allows for me to cut back some of this foam before I put it on the fly. Hold that together. If you can, this stuff doesn't smoke like the, the real liquidy stuff. I got it squeezing out the sides, which is really what I want. I know I, that way. I know I got enough glue. I'm gonna smear it around. But thick super glue does not dry the same way as the thin stuff. This doesn't uh, absorb into the foam quite the same way. It'll just stick the hell out of it, but it's it's not gonna do what the real liquidy stuff does it'll still stick your fingers together like nobody's business all right there i got it. let me do a dry fit i got a bigger hole at the bottom a smaller hole at the top oh yeah that's gonna work all right so now all i gotta do tilt the front Roop. do a little tilt on the back because i'm going to cut most of this off do a dry fit again that is printing, printing, printing there, printing there. Perfect. All right. I'm going to go ahead and cut the top at a slant. So I end up with what I want here. There we go. See? Now I got a perfectly good head. And I don't have to worry about getting too much glue on the whole thing all right now i'm going to pretty that up just a little bit before i slip it on here i'm going to tilt this back now i have been coming back leaving this the back end longer and then come back with thread i would have left my thread on here and then i'll capture the end of this thing over the hook that just kind of makes a cleaner fly in this particular instance, that's not as important. Take a little bit off of there. Check for square. I'm going to tilt the back a little bit while it's right here in my hands. Bend the back up just a little bit. There we go. Let's do another dry fit. Hmm, power's dropping over there. Alright, there you go. Get the bright lights having a little trouble with light levels. Let me shift that over just a tad bit. There we go. All right, I think I like it. So let's glue the front half a little bit of goop. It doesn't take much because this thing is going to seize on here like you would not believe. And there it goes. I got plenty of room up front. Now I got a couple choices here. I could make a cape where you take a, a thin piece and you come over the top and you concave the front. Well, you can't see that. I can't turn my vice. But basically you're creating a cup in the front here. I don't think that's so important. I prefer 
to use my hole punch, knock some stuff over, use my hole punch and just punch me a couple of eyeballs. Get that stuff out of the way. And what I do is I glue this on the front edge and the top edge. It makes a wonderful eye and it adds buoyancy to the top of the fly. A little bit of super glue, position it where you want it because you only get one shot. Once that glue sets, it's not going anywhere. trouble with light levels today. I got too much light in here. Any better. There you go. That's one. Check to see if it's going to stay put. Oh, and I think it is. Okay. Then we go to the other side. And a little blob of glue. Believe me, there's a lot of years getting into this point. Needs to come forward, but it's probably too late. It is, it's too late. Okay, once that foam sets, you're done. Those two pieces become one. Kind of like getting married. Oh, well, that turned out not too bad. Now, what I have been doing to make it look a little better, I've been taking this and taking that front part off even with the eyeballs not that it matters it's just a thing you know just a thing now you could leave this fly exactly like this and use it uh, I'm going to color it up a little bit I'm going to give it a black eyeball one there On there. See, what I like about these is that foam is not likely to let loose if it's just foam. If I put my little fancy eyeballs on there like this, these things get knocked off. It don't matter what you do. They'll separate. They, they just have all kinds of problems. So, once I've done that, I'm just going to do a simple two-stripe pattern. I'm going to color the top a little bit darker. Like that, just get the top of the eyes like that. And we're gonna leave it like that. Now, the next thing is to go ahead, now to make it more waterproof and make it float better, longer, I use this stuff. It's fingernail polish. Uh, but basically, it seals the foam. So we're just going to seal this foam. I'm going to try to keep it away from that black magic marker because as soon as I hit that black magic marker, it's going to bleed. So I want to do that as the last step. Don't be shy. Put a bunch on there. Especially on the front. If you plug the eye, don't worry. You can... Come back and poke something through it. I built several of these with that swivel in the back because I've been doing a little research on the popper dropper and it has paid off. I tried to use it on the brasses, but there was too much crap in the water, so I had to go straight. All right, getting it done, getting it done. really good this stuff will dry and absorb into the foam and make it much more waterproof a simple yellow and black popper it's probably the best color combination you can come up with see how that thing is staying back 
out of the way. That's perfect. It's going to sit like that 99% of the time. Missed a spot. Right there on the head. Boop, 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 boop. Give it a second coat. All right. And then what you do is you tie this to the strongest part of your line, the thickest part of your leader. And I've been using doubled up 10 pound test for this part to the fly line. And then 10 pound test or something lighter depending on your conditions and the fish you're after. If I'd been using doubled up 10 pound test when that big bass laid into that fly, uh, I'd have caught that fish. But the way I had it set up was for small fish and it wasn't really intended for two at a time. Uh, it could have handled two crappie at a time, but it's not going to handle a five pound bass. That will break doubled up line in the situation that I had with, whoop, nope, 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 I got a blank spot. In the situation I had with that crappie on, and I still can't quite figure out if that bass uh, hit the crappie. I kind of, you know, I slow mowed that video thinking that. Well, uh, initially I thought that crappie came out of that bass's mouth when it jumped. Uh, but I'm, I'm not totally sure it just wasn't hiding behind it. And he had a hold of that clouser, or she had a hold of that clouser. Most likely that was a female bass. The big ones typically, typically are, especially if they're heavy. Males tend to be long and skinny. Especially this time of year because they've been protecting that bed, running themselves ragged. Alright, there you go. There is one popper for a popper dropper, but this fly can be used on its own. I don't normally, uh, for, for the popper dropper, I don't normally put legs on it, but you could. And as a standalone fly... I probably should so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go ahead and give this one doubled up spinnerbait legs and then we're gonna run this right through the center of the body just below and behind the eyes and you try like the Dickens to get it straight through and even oh yeah I got that one just right see that that's just right probably should have waited from my goop to dry and you pull that knot see that put that knot right in the middle of that foam and it'll close in around that now you just cut your needle loose by doing like this run that back over now he's got legs I'll even those up after that uh, hard as nails stuff dries we'll give that fly uh, I'm gonna give this fly all day cuz I gotta go do other things gotta go work a lake that's one good fly it'll work 